All right, I think I see that um, other participants are joining at this time. I think um, at this point, we're probably gonna slowly start our webinar. Um, and I would like to thank everyone who is joining the webinar or who's gonna be watching it um, as a recording. Uh, thank you so much for checking in. This is our second webinar and we're gonna continue doing that once a month. Um, I would like to introduce you to um, Damar Eagles, who is join, who's joining me today for this webinar. He's our customer support manager. Uh, Damar, would you like to say something? Yeah, thank you. Um, excited to be joining, uh, helping out. I know some people might have seen me through some trainings. So just to be able to educate more and help out here is, should be fun. We should, we should learn some things. <laughs> Thank you, Damar. Um, and today, um, as you can see on your screens, we have a checklist. And today we're going to be going through some specifics of how to find people and add them in one click to your people database, um, how to download a CSV from if you have a LinkedIn recruiter or how to download a CSV if you just kept it in your Google Docs, um, how to upload resumes. We're also going to walk you through uh, some of the little details about how to add people through your mobile app if you're on the go. Um, how to add new candidates through projects, what's data enrichment, and also how to manage duplicates and maintain your clean database. So we're going to slowly start um, by presenting the Mars screen. Uh, just give me a second. If you hear weird noises, it's my dog, so. <laughs> Okay, um, and the place we're gonna start today is the people database. Um, everybody else who is on this webinar probably knows um, that when you go to people database, you're gonna be able to see the list of people. They're not necessarily your candidates, but it could be candidates, it could be clients, it could be um, the people that you added through contact grabber or manually. Right, perfect. So, yeah. So thank you for the introduction there. Um, so I do want to start off, I know we're talking about adding people, I do want to start off by at least covering a bit of the actual search function inside of Clockwork. Um, so starting with the search text keywords, and how that search, um, I know you had a scenario for me, did you want to provide that now? Right, yeah, um, I was wondering, if I'm going to be looking for someone based out of California, um, and specifically, I'm going to be looking for someone in marketing. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So again, we're looking for search text keywords. So if we're typing in California here, we get a result down to 78 people. And so when we're using these search text keywords, it is looking through their um, entire record. So for this keyword function, and you can uh, hover over their pictures or um, initials to kind of get a preview of how that keyword is being used. And so diving deeper into this, Clockwork uses Boolean string search. And I do like to emphasize the string search just for an imagery of it, because when you're using Clockwork, we want to do California. And the other option is marketing. We want to click on this uh, plus symbol here for your ad criteria. It will drop down an and. And then that'll give us marketing. So now we have California and marketing to 31 people. So we want to just make sure we keep using that ad criteria and just keep stringing those words together to be able to get a more precise search. Uh, the reason for this is, and I do want to highlight this as well, is that if we do marketing California in the same line, we're going to get our highest results yet, because if it's in the same line, it's automatically going to read it, read it as California or marketing. So that's how we get those results. So we want to make sure that we click this add button here, and then we use the second line for the second word. And then as you can see, this also still provides you an or option. Uh, if you like the cleaner look, and then you also get a not option for this search. So just wanted to dive into that a bit before moving forward. That's great. Um, and also, as I mentioned, in the people database, we have some candidates mixed in. And I was wondering how we can actually search um, the status by the status of a candidate. Yeah, perfect. Um, so we want to make sure we'll be able to see those filters. So we can do that by two ways. Clicking inside of the search text keywords area or clicking this uh, uh, down arrow here on the right. If we click that, we drop down our filters and we can see candidate status. So um, you have interviewing as a current status, right? We hit apply, 
we can see that we have 28 people that currently have the interviewing status. So these other options down here, I do want to spotlight. Um, if we're doing current at least, current at least is saying that a candidate on an active project currently or with at least this status or higher. So that's current at least, and we're talking about active projects. So now if we're looking at peak, we're still looking at peak with this status. And for peak, it's the highest status that they've obtained, the peak of their actual process, right? Um, and peak at least, this one I do want to emphasize, peak at least is still looking at peak, but is looking at active and closed projects. So peak at least is really opening up that funnel to be able to find that uh, candidate with that status. Great, thank you. And as we can see that there's two search bars um, on your screen, uh, the one that Damar just presented and the one above it. Mm -hmm. So what does the above one actually do? So the one up above right here, this is your quick search. So this one, you can search people, but on the right, you can see there's another dropdown. This provides you the option to actually look at projects, people, companies, schools, and deals to be able to type in the name, title, and to be able to be taken to that result right away. Perfect. And speaking about people, we are, as you can see, there's two ways to add people into your people database. One of them is well-known contact grabber. Um, so can you please show us how to add people via contact grabber directly from LinkedIn? Yeah, sure. Um, so contact grabber is a Google Chrome extension. So we do want to make sure we're on Chrome to be using the, the best efficiency for this. So I do have our own very own, very famous Jack here to import as an example. So there's two ways to import someone using contact grabber. The first being clicking on the contact grabber button up here at the top of your browser. That'll import the person to the top link in your contact grabber options. The other option to do this is also if you have multiple links is that where my mouse is in this empty space here, we wanna right click, or if you have a Mac control click to get this menu to pop up. And then from here, we go to contact grabber, upload to website, and then you can select the link that you wanna import the person to, whether that be your people database or directly into a project. So since we're here, I'm just gonna click on this top link so we can start to import. And as that does that, we can see it's showing what was uh, gathered, opens up a new tab, and it's gonna take us into um, our people database with the panel open, showing that Jack was successfully imported. Great, and as we all know, there is also this uh, window that says candidates and project. Uh, not sorry, not candidates and project, but his contact information. So right now we have Jack's email down below, and we can also, as far as I know, we can also invite him into a project. Is that right? Yeah. So this way, um, there's there's two different uh, options here when we're talking about inviting, right? So adding a candidate to a project is the first uh, card here that'll always be at the top when you import someone. And we can add them to a project. We can click on that and we can search in uh, the name of our project. And we click apply and that adds him into the project as a candidate. The invite button up here to separate the two, this button here in the upper right hand corner, this button is a as it is a add-on feature um, based off of the candidate portal. And this is uh, for specifically for to help with GDPR compliance and CCPA input. So candidates are able to create their own portal and add and edit their own information. So you always have the most updated version uh, related to the candidate. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Samar. And what about the enrichment feature? I see that there is a blue button um, about the active projects that says never enriched. Yes. So I was wondering what actually that does. Yeah, so this tool is a integration with Clockwork. So this is a one-click feature, which is really cool. Um, as long as the person has the uh, LinkedIn URL and their record, if we click this button, what this does is that it'll search through that URL and it'll grab any um, information that wasn't brought over previously and pull it into Clockwork. So all I have to do is click on the Never Enriched. We can see the data enrichment is being processed, and that'll start to go through and gather information from, um, from LinkedIn and pull it over. So we can see your on-demand person enrichment request has been completed. And so now uh, the date will also be updated once that is refreshed and completed. So um, 
Cool. Uh, yeah, so that's the, the feature here that we have with the enrichment. That's perfect. And I wanted to point out that everybody who joined the webinar or everybody who signed up for the webinar watching it in the recording will get 500 enrichment credits. Just for signing up, it's, it's a bonus for you guys um, because you're amazing. Thank you. Um, but let's continue. Actually, there's um, as far as we know, there's two ways to add a person um, into the Clockwork. First one we just introduced, which is the contact grabber, as you know, but also you can drag and drop um, documents in there, isn't it? Oh, correct. Yeah. So you can create a profile based off of a resume, right? So we want to click on these three dots where it's typically a menu button inside of Clockwork. At the very bottom here, we have parse resume. And so you can click inside this blue area to open up your files, but you can also drag and drop. So I have some downloaded already, and I'm going to just drag it over and drop it here in this blue space, and we can see the profile and we can import it. Uh, the cool thing about this as well is that you do have the ability to bulk upload resumes. So if you have like five of them and you want to import all five at once, you can do so. It'll create five different records for you. So there is a bulk uh, update to that as well. And as we all know, these are not the only the two only ways of adding people into um, into the Clockwork database. There is actually six different ways of how you can add candidates. Um, and let's go to the grid view, actually show them. Perfect. Yeah. So that the six ways are from actually would be inside of your project. Um, so once we're inside of here, um, we want to navigate to grid view. This has all of those capabilities inside of it. And inside of here, we'll see we have Jack from Contact Grabber that we added as well. And so navigating to the upper right hand corner, this blue add button, here's your six ways to add people to your project. Um, quick search people, what this does, if you click on this, it's basically going to show you the quick search bar and it'll have the most recent person you import it at the top of the list. And you can also search for people as well. And then all you have to do is click in a box. It'll add them to your search. Um, you can also add from people, which is where we just came from. You can um, select a person, add them to a project. We have add from strategy. This is related to the actual strategy tab. It'll navigate you there to be able to use your target list to add people to a project. So the one I do want to emphasize before moving forward um, is the add from CSV. This one is is um, is really helpful. Uh, this one is very is used. So if you have um, projects in LinkedIn, I believe this is a LinkedIn recruiter benefit though. But if you have you have the ability to export a pipeline export about twenty five people as a CSV, so you can export that from LinkedIn and just drag and drop it directly into your project and upload those records. So ahead of I went ahead of time and downloaded my own. And I'm able to drag and drop here the yeah, pipeline export. And as I click to import that, we'll see our blue bar goes across and it's processing all the 25 records, all the information that was in the, the document. And so, um, yeah, so you can do this if you have new uh, projects that you export or even old ones. Um, and this is a great benefit for old projects uh, because people might have switched jobs, things that might have updated. And we have a lot of people on here, so give us some time to buffer. There we go. All right, cool. So now, like, let's say this is a, an old project for me, and some of these people have moved on to different positions or changed contacts or locations. This is another time that the actual uh, person enrichment would be a great use. So now that I have 27 people here now, uh, I could either, just like we've seen in people view, I could click on their name, open up that panel, and I can en enrich this person individually or I can do this in a bulk fashion by selecting all, and I have update profiles here. So I can use that, I can click update profiles, and it'll begin to enrich all the profiles because they came over with a LinkedIn URL. That's, that's, that's super cool, thank you so much, Damar. And right now, what we are actually going to do is we're gonna show you how to add people on the go. So let's say, um, let's say you are, on your mobile phone and currently you don't have access to your desktop. Uh, what we are going to show you right now is how to add people through the mobile app. Uh, we do have a mobile app, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly share my screen. And there we are. 
Yeah, this is a perfect example of the mobile app. So you can use the face ID to get in. We want to click on menu for people. And this is if you're on the go, you're just talking to someone or you just got their information, you might want to just enter it in just to make sure it's safe. So when you back to your desk, then you can add in all the rest of the details. But this is just to make sure you're on, if you're on the go, you're just talking to someone. As we see, we have Janet Smith. We want to enter in that email address and then we can go ahead and add Janet. And it adds right away to our uh, people database. So we can search for Janet right away and we can see her email will be her identifier. And so we can see third option there, Janet Smith, and we see the same panel like we would see on the desktop version. Well, this is a perfect option to use if you're not near your desk at the moment. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, so right now, what we are going to do is we are going to show you, um, not sorry, not to show you, sorry. we are actually going to open up um, the field for you guys to um, ask any questions about the people database, about what you just saw in a webinar. Uh, maybe there's something that we didn't cover um, in this topic, so feel free to ask. Uh, we do have some questions um, from different users that were asking questions throughout the different time. Maybe it was like last week, two weeks ago. Uh, for example, there was a question that says how to merge the records. Um, Damar, would you like to show us how to merge the records? Uh, was this based off of importing them or just? Uh, just the merging, for example, I have uh, a few people that I, one I created myself and another one I imported LinkedIn, but essentially these are the two, um, these are the two mm -hmm. similar people. It's actually the same person. So um, it's just the one question that we uh, received throughout some time. And we just wanted to answer. OK, cool. Uh, let me get back up here and then we can go through it. Actually, this is one of the questions that we have um, in a Q&A session right now. So it's perfect. Oh, perfect. OK, cool. So um, if we're talking about importing someone with Contact Grabber, uh, let's say I, I'll do a, a live version of this, right? So. We just imported Jack here, so I'll grab another Jack Shirley. And we'll go ahead and contact grab him. And so because they have the same name and typically their same LinkedIn URL will have their first and last name in it, we will see an option to either merge or ignore because it's looking for, when you're importing someone, it's looking based off identifiers. And the identifiers are email address and LinkedIn URLs. So that's how the application would know if there is an, a duplicate or not. So first and last name isn't enough because as you can see, people have first and last names. So it is looking for those identifiers. And the reason this one came up is that if I go to links here, I can see that Jack Shirley is in both the URLs. So that's why it's asking if I want to ignore or merge them. And so here, um, of course, they are different people. So I just want to go ahead and ignore that. And as that timer goes down, it'll just keep the record separate. But if I were to merge them, it would merge it into what you can see as the new record and what would be the old record. So that's one way of merging. If they're already inside of the uh, platform and inside your people database, then you want to make sure we just click on those two and you have a merge button right here. And this will ask you to ask just for a confirmation to merge because once uh, uh, some records are merged, we cannot unmerge them. So that is a, a pro tip there as well, a good disclaimer. Yeah. So those are the two ways to get that done. That's great. And we have um, one question that I'm just going to read out loud from the QA section. Um, and it's from Lee Song. It says, why would I need to re-enrich people if I just uploaded them from LinkedIn? Well, and I think this question, question because, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so that was a, just a part of an example to keep to keep it going because if you're just now pulling them over, there would be no necessarily need to enrich because all their data would still be current. So the best thing for this is that you could also um, go back a month later just to check to see if things were um, outdated and then you can use the tool to get everything up to date. But if they're just now being imported, then enriching wouldn't really bring a benefit over for you. 
thank you for that. Um, and there's another question from uh, Jen Kalalsi, um, and she's asking, does parse resume pull info from a resume or just upload it to the person's record? Basically, so does parsing, parse resume? Will, yeah, parsing will scrape the text from the resume and create the profile out of it. And it should also put the actual, uh, the resume that's been, that's been scraped, it should also show in your uh, note section and that person's note section with the resume text as the note type. So it'll be able to create the record with that entire, that entire resume. Great, and there's uh, one question, it's actually a really good question um, for everybody to know about the contact grabber feature. Um, and Anna's asking, how do you get the right click function for contact grabber to import candidates directly to a specific search? Yeah, so you so we do have the actual um, data import link here. So this is the link, <clears throat> and then you would use your email and uh, password that you use for Clockwork to log into this to this portal. And from here, you can see you have your main contact grabber uh, import URL. And then once you either create or have been invited to a project, then you will have some active project URLs as well. And you just want to make sure you go and copy copy those, and then you can right click on Contact Grabber, if my mouse will work, go to Options, and then you just enter in that URL right below it and hit Save, and it'll start to show up in that listing. So that's how we would get that done. And again, that's data-import.clockworkrecruiting.com. Great, um, thank you for this, Damar, as well. Um, they, and by the way, if we don't get to all of the questions today, because it looks like a lot, we will get back to you over the email as last time. So because we have uh, most of your records. So um, in case if something doesn't get answered, we, we will make sure to answer you directly and just create a whole email thread. Just as always, we're going to be doing that. So don't worry about this. Um, and also Anna just had a follow-up question, I guess, about the contact wrap as well. Also, um, does the CSV upload give you the entire work history of candidate or just the current role? Uh, so it, it should provide the entire work history from the one we use in the project and then we use the enrichment. It's exporting their, uh, their entire profile. So it'd be based off an entire uh, work history, not just the top. And also one more question related to the people database. Um, and they're asking, how can I search in the people database for candidates that were on the past or closed project? And can they add them to a new project they're working on? Uh, so you're saying if they're, how do we move them from one project to the next? Um, no, it's basically is um, if they're searching for people database for a specific candidate, but the specific candidate was in a past project or closed project? And can they also add this person to a new project that they just opened, for example? Yeah, so candidates can always be added to multiple projects. Uh, this red suitcase here is actually a great indicator showing you, and if you hover over it, that a candidate is on multiple projects. So that's a great way to get a preview of that. Um, I just click on Brian here. So many people. And you can see there are multiple projects here. And I just wanted to show that the uh, enrichment brought over all the positions and not just the top. So that was for the last question. Um, but yeah, so um, another way to add people to like, say if this is a closed project, if you go into that project in grid view, you can actually go through select all, or you can select a few. And then you can click on this add button here that shows in the middle. And then from here, you have another project and you can select these three and select another project and you can add them into that project as well. So you can dive into a closed project and add them that way, or you can start in people view and you can uh, use on project, select the closed project, which will be dark gray. And then it'll filter by the people on that project and you can select all of those as well. And you can still add them to a project. So that's two ways to get that done if you're looking at uh, closed projects. Great. Uh, thank you so much for this, Damar. I feel like we may have uh, a little bit more time for just one or maybe a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, what, by the way, thank you so much for asking so many. It's It really makes a big difference. Um, and I do see one from Sean. 
Um, and it's a question about, so the photos don't move over when you import with CSV, is that right? Basically, the photos don't really move once you upload that from CSV. Yeah, it's, it's so when you export the pipeline export from LinkedIn, they don't provide that option. So uh, it will upload their records. It just won't have a profile picture. So yeah, Great. that is correct, yes. There is one more question just above it also in regards to the photo. And Kara is asking, will the photo upload, will the photos upload when it happens in mass, mass or bulk uploads, basically? Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of this, the same question. So yeah, the photos wouldn't come over if you're uploading, if you're using the pipeline export, then they they wouldn't uh, pull over. The best right. way to get that done was would be with a contact grabber. Perfect. Yes, at this point, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to wrap up, but as we mentioned already, um, we are going to get back to all of the questions that you asked. We do have your contact information and everything, um, and in case you have anything to say, please, please feel free to contact, support me directly if you have my email. If not, uh, we're going to, I mean, support, we'll, we'll provide it to you in case if you have any anything specific. Um, once again, everybody who joined this webinar or everybody who is watching it um, in the recording, um, you will get the 500 enrichment credits for the firm uh, in case if you need that. Um, and in the meantime, thank you guys so much for joining um, our webinar today. The next webinar is going to be on Thursday, March 9th, uh, also at 2 p.m. ET, 11 a.m. PT. Uh, the topic we have not decided on the topic yet, but it will happen. Um, and once again, thank you so much for checking in. It was a pleasure. It is always a pleasure to serve you. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.